Hello and welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. This is a mini program. We'll be on for about a half hour this time. This is episode number 270, and I'm Patricia Steer. My guests are Dee Dee Van and Gary John, and we're going to be talking about the Flat Earth Convention in Amsterdam, September 27th, 28th, and 29th, and that's in 2019. And we're going to discuss the whole event in this half hour. We're going to talk about the international speakers that have been announced thus far and the ones that have not yet been announced. A mystery. We'll talk about the science debate and the party that's going to happen. We're going to talk about accommodations for those of you who want to go. I need to still work out mine. And also uh, we'll talk about the Globe Light Tour, which will end their West European travels at the convention opening. And in the description box of this video, you will find the link to the uh, Flat Earth Convention website the YouTube channel and Didi's channel and Gary, I didn't put anything for you. So you're the, you're the odd man out, <laughs> but welcome both. Thank you both for being here and we'll go with ladies first. So Didi, please, for those who don't know you, and I know that that's a, it's far fetched, but then again, we always have people coming into the whole flat earth awakening who don't know all of us. So can you tell people where you live and um, what your role is in everything? Uh, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Didi. I'm from Belgium. Uh, I'm I'm just a, a normal girl from a tiny country. Nothing special about me. The only thing uh, I started flat Earth maybe almost three years ago, and then I came across the convention, the first one in Raleigh, which I went to, and then I heard Gary did one in the UK. So I contacted Gary, and we started helping each other, and I got involved in the in the UK convention and. Now we're here and doing the Amsterdam convention and, you know, time flies by. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And for you to say that there's nothing special about you is crazy because I've met you and you have something special about you that doesn't need words to define it. You have this sort of personality that everybody likes. In fact, I posted on my Facebook community page that I was going to be doing this show and um, Karen B said, oh, I love Gary and I love Dee Dee, but they, people love you in a way that is because you're both actually so low key. You're not bragging or trumpeting what you're doing. You're just very mellow and very low key and that engenders a lot of respect and love. So Gary, you're next on the hot seat. For those who don't know you, tell us uh, where you live and what you're doing with this uh, convention. Okay, uh, well, on the social media, my name is Gary John, but my actual full name is Gary John Heather. And the reason for that is several years ago when I set up my private Facebook, um, profile I, I decided that i didn't really want loads of people you know getting in touch and adding me in this i wanted to because facebook wasn't really something that was on my agenda so um, i just decided to use my middle name and of course then when i then decided what was it now in march i think 2017 i was actually joining uh, the sun and moon group with karen and a few others and after about a month of going on some hangouts and i think you may, may have even come across to one of them i actually decided that you know, I really wanted to get more into Flat Earth and I didn't really want to like force it on people that know me, uh, either friends or, or family or whatever that, you know, if they want to come to me and ask, then obviously that's that's nicer than it being forced on them. So I set up a separate uh, Facebook and where Dee Dee said that she's actually been on it almost three years, I think I'm literally about a month away from three and a half years. The only things I don't know is exactly what part of uh, August 2015, but uh, it was Mark Sargent's uh, of clues. And, um, and here we are, so <laughs> two conventions later. Well, you, you and I, Gary, can blame Mark Sargent for ruining our life. And I think that's what Rob Skiba always jokes around and says, too, because he saw the clues first, too. And I know he's in the live chat. So hello, Mark. Um, first off. Hi, Mark. The, uh, the event that's in the U.S., when we in the U.S. do these things, we call them um, conferences and you call it a convention. What's the difference? Because people are always stumbling over, which one is it? Which one is it? Why have you, I'll just let you answer it. Well, I'll let you both, whoever feels more qualified to answer. Why do you call it specifically what you call it? That's funny because me and Gary had this conversation this week as well. <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, for me in Dutch, conference is not very commonly used it's more convention so for me it's more natural to say convention and i think for gary i can't speak for him but i think we both because in, in principle it's there's not a big of a difference as far as i know but convention for me sounds more uh, closer to my my uh, 
Burma language. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think in, in the States I've heard both, and I bet if I looked it up, there's some weird fine line between the two. But yeah, so we've got a convention and we've got a conference. But either way, we've got people gathering in the uh, in the name of truth. So Gary, the first uh, the first convention, wow, see, there I go. I was stumbling as to which to call it. Uh, the first convention that you put on in England last year was successful, but I know that you put a lot of your money into that. So how is this one differing money-wise and how that's all going? Um, can I just mention about the conference and convention thing first? Oh, yeah, because, sure, yes. Um, but basically, I started off that I was in two minds about what to call it, and after about a month of getting everything set up with conference, um, Darren Nesbitt actually said, actually, don't you think it's more of a convention? And I thought, okay, without Wik you know, looking it up on Wikipedia, I actually... Um, I thought actually it does sound better. And the way I look at it, and I don't know if I'm wrong here, and I probably am, but I'm going to say what I think it is, is that with a convention, sorry, with a conference, you just go to be told what's going on. Whereas with a convention, it's more interactive. And <sighs> I, I'm, I, but I don't know if that's the truth. I just, that's how it is in my mind's eye. So, um, so and I think, I think personally, I think convention sounds so much nicer. All right. So we've got both going in the flat earth realm. So, hey, we've, yeah. we've got all bases uh, covered. Um, and then now to the question that I just mentioned to you. Yeah, I think the way it differs is that um, there's a lot of things, really, is that what happened? I started um, back in May 2017 and everything needed to start from scratch. I mean, I went over to um, a place near Utrecht to do research and I, I met a guy called Franz Heslinger, who's been doing a lot of conventions and conferences over there. I also had to spend quite a lot of money on setting a website set up. And obviously I had to do market research and find out what obviously people would want. And obviously people didn't really know me. So, I mean, that was difficult. And even though I was attacked for that, apparently I'd only joined Facebook literally in Flat Earth about a month earlier because I'd been in it almost two years, but I didn't have a presence. So, of course, I was using my private Facebook just to dabble and looking on YouTube. Uh, but the way it's different this time is that there's a lot of reasons. One of um, is, is that Didi is now a bit of a mini expert on on the web. Um, so, you know, she's obviously good at uh, building the website, so it's not obviously cost us any money, apart from the, obviously the server fees. Um, we also know um, what we what worked last time and what didn't, and you know, there's a lot of risks, because what happened is I, I did, I rightly or wrongly, I actually went for a delicate package uh, with the hotel, which... Um, locked us into a certain um, cost that was um, like almost set in stone. Luckily, we've managed to renegotiate when Didi and I went there in the January from 275 people minimum or 275 paid delegate rate to down to 200. And so that obviously helped a hell of a lot. But there was a lot of costs that were, we incurred and um, we had to contractually agree to certain things. Um, and a lot of it was down to probably... Um, we didn't actually fully understand or it's not Didi's fault it's my fault because I, I was the one who actually set a lot of this up before Didi even come along but this time and Didi has to take the, the, the credit for this is that she's negotiated with the actual uh, the venue we've got a really good deal and it's a lovely you know, you've probably seen the video and I think our overheads are, are a lot more controllable this time we haven't got fixed contracts that are um, going to hopefully you know will unfortunately maybe come back to hurt us so um, there seems to be a lot more um, control. And with the success of the one that you had last year, more people are, um, I guess, uh, they, they can rest assured that this one will go on as planned. The same thing happened with Robbie Davidson. There were accusations before he even did his first uh, uh, convention in Raleigh, North Carolina, and people were saying he was going to run with the money and never put it on. I mean, I'm sure you heard the same things about you, but he did it. And then he did it again and again and again. And now people know, yeah, I can buy tickets to that. The show will go on. So I'm sure that's what you're going to be feeling this time as well. Plus, you've got a website and a design and a logo design. All of those things you had to fix or you know, create in the very first one last year, you can go with them this year. And I see a wonderful looking banner behind you, Gary. Yeah, so I'll, tell I'll, us who I'll made really it. <laughs> so I, move, I, move out, I move out the way. Can everyone see that? Very so, nice. Um, even though I can't, I, I can't lay claim to the actual design of it. I think Didi and Iru worked on that. But the actual logo is actually my works logo. You know, we opened up my business, uh, but obviously it's been changed to to make it work for Flat Earth. So uh, 
yeah so uh, obviously if you can see i don't know if you can see like you know the colors and whatever and i think what happened is i had um the um the web team actually started it and then iru got hold of it and, and improved it so uh and Didi and i have agreed that we actually like the the whole fe convention um I, I use this, these words very carefully, but you know, it's like a brand. And even though we've got to be very careful about the corporate world, unfortunately, we have to work within the corporate system. And like where Robbie's got FEIC, we've got FE Convention. And if if we get a chance to talk about Robin and Roxanne and the Global Eye Tour, mm -hmm. then we can explain a little bit about where does that come in under the under the umbrella, if that's the right way of putting it. But um, well, the logo is yeah. very good looking. I like the colors of bluish and purple and pinkish tones and salmon-y tones. I think it's very attractive looking. So um, congratulations on and on that, most definitely. Okay, so most uh, people, what they want to know is, we already discussed when it is, and this is all in the description box and on the website, which is also in the description box, and on the YouTube channel, which is also in the description box. But people want to know what are the accommodations, what are the costs, and who's going to be there so we want to knock all of that out and then definitely want to talk about the global eye tour so what shall we go with first um i think maybe people want to know who's going to be appearing and you're doing it differently this year in the way you're announcing who's going to be speaking and then who's going to be doing a, a science debate you're um letting names go piece by piece bit by bit which i think is building excitement it's working quite well so who have you announced thus far and maybe we are going to be able to pull out another secret name from you or even a hint for the next announced name or not? <laughs> you never you, know. <laughs> uh, because it's, it's eight months away, it's still a long time. So we decided that we don't want to put out everything all at once because this gives me a little time to make the trailers and edit some more videos and to get all the flights in order and all the little details that need to work out. So. And because it's eight months away and we work with uh, with Robin, who does uh, the UK convention, we decided that every week one of us would release an, another name. So it helps both conventions to get a little bit more time and we can help each other by doing that. But so far, uh, we've been uh, on the website as online for a month now and we released a couple of names. And one of you, of course, is, is you, Patricia. You're going to be a... Uh, coming to Amsterdam with us, and, and we hope that you will host the open mic session on the Friday. Can't wait. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming. And as well, on the on the Friday, we're going to have a, a surprise act there, which we will announce in February as well. And we have Jason from the Globe Light Tour. He will uh, he will come on the Friday night, and he will he will tell a little bit of about his adventures because they've been uh, they've been doing uh, the UK for two weeks, and they will do the UK convention there and, and talk a little bit about uh, the tour there, and then they will travel to Spain and France and end up in Amsterdam. So Jason will will tell a little bit about that, and I will probably join Jason for for a week or more with the tour itself. So we will discuss everything about that on the Friday night. And that's um, Jason of the Disberry family, correct? That's correct, yes. All right. And Robin, you mentioned, is from the channel Lift in the Lid, for those who don't know who, who all we're talking about. Yes, so Robin is doing the UK convention, and uh, Jason uh, is doing the whole tour. And everybody can, of course, join on the tour, or uh, they, can, they can contact Jason for the information. But for the convention in Amsterdam, we're going to have a, a, an opening party on the Friday, as I explained. And then for the Saturday, we want to have a whole day of debates, because in Birmingham, we learned that, that the debate ses session was just a bit too short, and, and we wanted to really expand on that one. So we decided to have a whole day on the Saturday. And we will announce one of the Flat Earth debaters also uh, in February. So uh, there's a lot of new names coming out in a couple of weeks. But for the Sunday, we have announced three of the six speakers now, and uh, Iru has been uh, has been announced this weekend. So Iru Landucci will be joining us as a Sunday speaker, as well as Roxanne from the uh, from the UK. She's uh, she's from the uh, Glo Globalist Denier channel. And then uh, <laughs> lastly, we have Sharon. Everybody knows Sharon from Sharonism. So that's three of the six speakers for the Sunday. That means we are about halfway on the on the announcements on the website, and every two weeks we will. Uh, release a new name, so that's the plan. All right, so when is the next announcement going to be? That's uh, the 8th of February. All right, coming up, I, I think I know who it is, but I'm sworn to secrecy, so. <laughs> yeah, we will release the first Flat Earth debater in, in two weeks, so. 
Well, the debate last year in England was great. In fact, uh, the debate was so good that it won a flatty award at the uh, at the American uh, conference um, in Denver because it was really wonderful and the people that were on it were great. And I'm sure that this one's going to be even better. So great speakers, interesting debates, good debaters. Um, we know some of the people that are going to be there and we will all keep tuned to see who else is going to be there. So if you want to go, what is the cost of the event? Well, we have a couple of different tickets. Uh, we decided to go for a day ticket or a copy ticket. And then on top of that, we also offer a, a duo ticket. So for two people and a group ticket for four people. So the day ticket is about 55 euros. The combi ticket is 105 euros. The duo is 200 and the group is 380. So uh, when you buy a, a bigger amount of uh, uh, more people for a ticket, then it gets a little bit cheaper. So it's about 55 for a day and 100 for a weekend. That means Friday to Sunday. Some of us work in euros, some of us work in pounds, some of us work in dollars, but people can go on the website and figure it out for themselves. Um, how do you guys feel, Gary and Didi, uh, rate-wise, competitive-wise, with what's going on in America? And, of course, the American one goes to Canada, too. So um, how do you think it, uh, it measures up cost-wise? Well, to give you a quick idea, 100, and 100 euro is about 95 pounds or $120. So That sounds very reasonable and definitely worth it. A lot of people criticize, I'm sorry, criticize any of these conventions or conferences and say they're just money-making schemes, money-making operations, those putting them on are in it to line their pockets. You know, we've heard all of this criticism and um, there's really no way to quash it because haters going to hate. But um, what happens with proceeds that you guys get for doing this? Um, is some of it going back in to, pr to produce next year or, you know, give us a brief overview of that. Should I say, Didi? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you're lining yeah, uh, your pockets with gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, all I would say is that I've actually lined my pockets with a negative bank balance because, right. as you as you pointed out in the beginning, um, the first event cost money, and it's it was literally uh, certain things like um, like, for instance, the live streaming that we actually got let down with two weeks ago. And we then had to scrabble to get a replacement that costs a lot of money, but they didn't exactly deliver. So there's certain things that happen that were out of our control. And that's where we're working really hard. We, uh, Didi and I like brainstorm all the time. And we're, the other good thing is we're actually connected to a lot of people now. So we're, like when we were in Denver, a lot of people come up to us and say, well, can you do the help or they would like to come or whatever. So I was stalking you in Denver. I was asking everyone. I couldn't find you. And I know. I, I, where's Gary? Where's Gary? <laughs> and I was walking around asking everybody, where's Gary? Like you were the lost dog I was trying to find or my child yeah. or something. <laughs> and finally, I saw you at a table in the middle of a, somebody's speech a presentation. And so I went and sat like at the same table with you at an empty chair and kind of started staring at you. And you probably thought, what's wrong with this? Who's that strange person? Oh, it's no. Patricia. <laughs> anyway. It's funny, actually. I said to uh, Didi, I said, oh, I haven't seen, uh, I've seen Mark, but I've, you know, I haven't, I've seen uh, Jaron, I've seen Missa and I've seen Bob and Cammy, but I haven't seen Patricia because she was standing right next to you, literally, I don't know how, half an hour early and I, I didn't realize. So, so busy, so, so many people, part of the rooms are dark at times. And it's just hard to meet everybody. I still hear about somebody who was at any of the events I've gone to, and I'm like, I didn't even see them. What a shame. But, you know, that's how it goes. Um, in this particular event, there's the option of staying in a campground and bringing your own tent or, or running a cabin. This is different than anything that's been done before. Who wants to tackle that topic? Yeah, so I've been in... One. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Amsterdam many times. It's about two, hour, two hours away from where I live, so not too far. And I always go to this little campsite with my camper van. And it's a lovely, uh, a lovely accommodation. There's People are, are very uh, social there. There's uh, It's in the middle of nature. So Amsterdam is quite busy with, with a lot of uh, noise and, and people. And the campsite is just about 10, 15 minutes outside of the, the city center. And it's a very cheap price compared to the, the hotels in the center. And it's it's in nature, so very relaxing and a good atmosphere. So we wanted to go on the campsite, and and all the speakers and the core team will be staying on the campsite, and and we hope that uh, everybody attending will do the same, so we can have a little campfire in, in the evening with everybody. 
Oh, nice. Can't wait. And if a person wants to bring a tent, they can do, they can have a camper van they can bring. They also can rent a cabin and share with up to, I think, four people. Is that the number? Yes, a, a normal cabin is for four people and it's about uh, 70 euros for uh, for the weekend. All right. Or you can just rent one and stay on your own if you're wanting to, uh, you know, spread out and have some room. That's kind of what I'm going to do. But um, yeah, so it sounds great. And then a quick walk over to the center um, or bike ride or whatever it is that however you want to get there. Uh, that'll be that'll be fun. Yeah, you can walk, you can take the bus, you can rent a bike even in Amsterdam. It's it's made for tourists and, and, and people visiting the city. So whatever you want to do there, it's possible. You've got a cat friend who's attending the show. Tell us who this is. <laughs> Well, she's my little stalker. She's she's in every show lately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have two cats. This is Trixie. She's my girl. Ah, oh. she, she likes to be around. <laughs> I love cats, so just have to have to throw that out there. Um, and I think cats hear us talking, and they don't know the words, but they hear the sound of our voices, and they come over whenever they hear talking. My cats will be doing their own thing, you know, around me. But the minute I turn the mic on, they come in this room and sit down next to me. They just, I think they just think. She's talking. Let's go hang out. I don't know what it, why they do it, but anyway. Yeah, little stalkers. Yeah. yeah, they are. Exactly. Love them. All right. So we've got the idea that we can do many different options when it comes to staying there. And with that comes many different costs from the least expensive being bring your own tent, the most expensive being rent the cabin on your own. So I think this is fantastic because it gives the opportunity for people who might've complained before it's too expensive to stay in a, in a sort of city environment hotel. So this is, this is a really great thing. And also the campfire at night and hanging out, I mean, in Amsterdam, I'm really excited because the only time I've ever been to Amsterdam is multiple times I've flown to the UK. It's where I've got a layover. So I've just been in an airport and this time I get to see the beautiful city and I have heard it's tremendous. So I can't wait. Do you think people are going to either come before or go after and then go hang out in the city? Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping so. Well, we know that the Globe Light Tour is going to stop there as well. And I know they're going to do a day of activism in Amsterdam. So I'm hoping that some people will stay, stay, uh, stick around after the weekend to join the, the Globe Light Tour. I certainly will. That's great. I can watch everybody in action and I can view the city. I hear there's f fantastic museums and, you know, everything Amsterdam has to offer. So I can't just say that I, I went to the conference and have been to the airport in Amsterdam. I have to at least have several things that I've accomplished because it's pretty far from where I am. I know, Didi, it's not far from where you are. It's your backyard, basically. So I'm excited. Convention. 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 <laughs> See, there I did it. I, it's gonna be, it's gonna happen. And it happens when I talk about the American one too. So darn it, you guys, why couldn't you both have the same names? <laughs> no, anyway. we, 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 need Robbie, we need Robbie to catch up. So, yes, uh... <laughs> ah, exactly. Well, Another interesting thing is the, the evening party on the Friday night is going to be in a different venue. So we have the main venue for the for the convention itself, which is a big theater. And the theater is in the, the public library, which is the biggest in Europe, by the way. So that's an interesting little fact there. But the opening party is in a different venue, and it's a small bar in the center of Amsterdam. So if people want to uh, visit the city before or after or go to a party, the opening party from the convention is in the city center itself. So it's a, a fun location to, to visit whatever you want to do. And for the main convention, it is located on the, on the side of the city, but it's about a 10 minute walk from the central train station. So still very easy, uh, easy to reach, but not as much as the, the city center. So if you decide to come early, which I think now I am after you mentioned that and decide to stay like a day or two later, you know, for the Globe Light Tour, which I've decided now I'm going to do, can you still stay in the, um, for example, the tent situation all the way up to the cabin situation? Um, or, or is there some restriction on how long you can stay in those? There is no restriction on the campsite. And until the end of November, the campsite will be open seven days a week. It's a very popular campsite. So I, I do encourage people who want to come to the convention to to book in with the campsite early because starting March, April, the tourists will, will get their cabins as well. As for the cabins, I know that I could go online and look this up, but for those who are just curious and are just watching us right now, uh, what kind of facilities are provided inside the cabins? Do you need to bring your own sheets? Is there a shower? These are important questions. 
Well, it is a very basic campsite cabin. So you practically get a little cabin with a table, some chairs, and then uh, two double beds with a mattress. So you have to bring your sleeping gear, which in your case, Patricia, of course, we will provide for you because it's hard to bring with the plane. Oh, <laughs> nice. Thanks. That's wonderful. I didn't know. But <laughs> it's it's just a small cabin with the four beds. And there is a, a blocks on the campsite where you can shower and there's toilet blocks, but it's all separate from the cabin. So the cabin is just a basic sleeping setup. Wonderful. Okay, so everybody knows about that. And uh, as I said, the information on that is in the description box of this video. All right, let's talk Globe Light Tour. Um, um, Gary, tell us about how they're going to be a big part of this. Um, obviously, I hope that I, I do uh, them justice because, as you probably are aware, they're doing something really significant, including two conventions. It takes in another 37 countries, uh, so including uh, the UK, obviously, and um, Amsterdam, no, Netherlands. There's 39 countries in total. I think there's 64 destinations. Starts at the end of uh, August, which I think is the 29th, and it runs right up to um, Birmingham or Kidderminster on the 13th. Uh, then Jason's going to have a, a well-earned rest because we're really worried about him um, overdoing it. And then he's going to travel down, and uh, I think Didi mentioned earlier about going down into um, France and Spain and Portugal, and then work back up to Switzerland and then come to the Amsterdam Convention. So like Didi mentioned, we're really excited about him being there on the Friday to explain more or less um, the overview of what happened leading up to the UK and the two weeks subsequently um, leading up to the, um, the Amsterdam Convention. And then he's going to carry on with a group of people, and I think Didi's going to take part in some of it, um, around the rest of Europe and uh, I think it ends around about the mid-November and, um, and we're really excited to be working with them because you know we're, I'm, I'm really close to Roxanne and I'm getting to know Robin very well and Jason and they're just good people and, and I think the five of us we really feel very connected and we're really proud to be working with them and uh, one thing I mentioned earlier that I would like to just uh, address is that um, I had a, a meeting with Robin and we were asking the question you know you know, how can we support them? Do they want to be a global light tour? Do they want to do a convention under, you know, in another name? Do they want to do it under the FE, FE convention umbrella? And they straight, they straight away, they like the idea of us like pooling resources. Even though we're separate, we've got different costs in, and different responsibilities. We are connected. We are working reasonably closely together on, you know, behind the scenes on things. And um, and I think that that means, I think that the, the thing that's happening in Europe, which you include, you know, the, the UK, Europe and the two conventions makes it a very powerful unit. And what I'm hoping is something significant from like the media and, you know, um, a lot of um, flat earthers and, and non flat earthers, because it's not just going to be um, activism. It's actually also going to be that people like, for instance, they get the, I'm, I'm um, chatting to a girl in the UK at this moment is going back to uh, Lithuania. That's Victoria. And she's moving back in April. And I said, look, there's the, uh, the tour is going to be coming uh, through um, where you are. Could you be involved? You know, obviously, because she knows English and she knows uh, Lithuanian and a few other languages. And I think she's about an hour away. And she said that she, she really wants to be there. And I believe that Jason has worked really hard in, in setting up a, a network uh, with the likes of uh, Robin and, uh, and Roxanne getting involved as well and Caroline. And they're really getting together a database of people. And I just think that it's not just activism, which is great, but it's actually connecting the uh, flat earth in Europe, which I think it's, I think it's just amazing. I just think it's, you know, it, it needs to be applauded because it's massive. Yes, it is. There, this whole thing, all of the people involved, the whole Globe Light Tour, everybody who's watching this at a later date, everybody in the live chat right now, you two, the conference, the convention, anybody who's doing anything involving this awakening, I applaud everybody. It's not easy. Your whole life has been turned upside down. Uh, sometimes there's issues with friends and family. Sometimes you yourself are torn. Is it worth it? The sacrifices I have to make, sometimes doing flat earth or truth seeking is a a second full-time job or your first full-time job almost. Um, and, you know, we all know that it can be lonely at times. So getting together at these sorts of events is so worth it. I just want to mention on that, Patricia, I, I leading up to um, Denver, um, Didi and I had a conversation because we both had busy lives. Things were happening in, you know, respective, you know, in our respective lives that, you know, basically it wasn't exactly putting us away from Flutter, but we were both busy doing other things. And we were not too sure if we were going to do something. And then Robin wanted to do something in the UK around the Globe Light Tour. And 
I really wanted to go come to Denver. And part of it was down to the fact I think I lost my mojo a little bit and just lost a little bit of energy. And you know, happens. I don't know if it's because I don't know if it's because of the finances in in the UK because obviously well, it's very difficult. To you lost bang money, on about it. and yeah, also in the first. I think it's the effort. And then yeah, there's I the drama the too. The drama can suck mm. the life out of you too. I mean, it, it can. Wow. You're right. And obviously, you and I have both had. Well, you've shared a lot more than me, but um, I think Didi's been reasonably unscathed. But maybe yes. I'll, just, I'll just put the kibosh on that now. Um, <laughs> But I went to Denver and I just fell in love with it again. And um, and a lot of people get it wrong when they just say, what's the point of going to a convention or a conference? Because you've already seen it or you can see it on YouTube or whatever. But it's you don't get the feeling. You don't get the atmosphere. And connecting with uh, fellow flat earthers and people on the fringe or whatever is, is really powerful. And when you've got the likes of... Um, um, like John Morgan on the left of me and Rick Hummer on the right. And I went to uh, Bob and Cammy's house and th- there was um, Jaron and Missa there. And there was David Weiss and Paige and there was uh, Matt Long and Jessica. That's priceless. I, yeah. I really was. Um, and Dee was there as well. And obviously there's a lot of people that were not there that would have loved to have been there. And we'd love them to be in there as well. But there's, there's only so many people that can be invited, I suppose, but we felt really privileged and, um, and very lucky. And I think the whole journey that I've personally been on is just been like getting to know you and obviously Mark and Jaron and, you know, like Roxanne and everyone else that I unfortunately haven't mentioned here. It's been very special. And um, I just think the community. And the other thing I want to mention, Patricia, is this year is massive. I mean, it's about nine uh, meetups, no, significant meetups, conventions, um, conferences, uh, Globe Light Tours. I mean, it's a big year. Mm-hmm. And there's things that are related to Flat Earth, like the Question Everything conference coming up in February. There's a Flat Earth aspect to that. So I consider it in with the mix with all of us because a lot of the same Flat Earthers are going to be there. And, you know, what you were saying uh, about uh, conferences and conventions um, holds true. I remember in Denver, I was, uh, who would have thought I would be in a car with Bob driving and Cammy uh, headed to go to a vegan restaurant where Bob, notoriously not vegan, is enjoying vegan food. And now he's telling me he's eating 100% plant-based. He enjoyed that food so much and his health is improving so much. And so, I mean, that was one of those, wow, how did this happen in my life? Or going guitar shopping with flat earth man and his wife, which happened in Denver, and any of the other almost surreal experiences that will happen to you if you go to one of these things that you you really can never, you can't ever, there's no price. There's no price for this. I I, I I think, Gary, you had your first veggie burger in Denver, right? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, what happened, we we happened to be there, and um, it was funny, actually, there was a few people there, including Michelle, and, um, and she just thought, oh, she knew that uh, Didi was uh, a vegan. Um, and she is too. And, yes, and exactly. And basically, uh, we, we spoke afterwards and she actually asked me, you know, if I, if I was obviously a vegan or vegetarian. I said, well, no, I'm not. And she's, she sent me a video, What the Health? And, yeah. and, and, and what was really beautiful about this is that she didn't push it hard. She just literally said, oh, have you watched it yet? And I said, no, I haven't. I haven't got around to it. She said, oh, have a look. It, you'll, I think you'll find it quite fascinating. And this went on for about two weeks. And I eventually watched it. And I was actually falling asleep at the same time I was trying to watch it. And I, I, all I can say is I, I took on a board enough to actually think, OK. And I would like to think I was a vegan, but it's difficult to go straight from yeah the old can... so basically i'm a vegetarian with um cutting out as much dairy as i can Great. but then sometimes it happens where there's dairy in there but i don't i don't i do not have any milk anymore and um and i, I cut out dairy as much as i can and um i'm not i'm not like overboard i'm not on a soapbox i'm not saying oh i can't believe you're eating meat people eat meat around me and i have had on two occasions in the last eight or nine weeks um so where I thought it's difficult for likes of you and Dee Dee and the people that do this, I actually find that um, I, I can't say how do I feel differently compared to how I used to be. But I just well, you were already good. very healthy. You're a runner, et cetera. So. Yeah. yeah, but I think it's a good thing. Can I just mention, I, I just want to go back to the campsite. Uh, a couple of things that you mentioned. Uh, the one thing I don't think was mentioned is that there's a TP option as well. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. And secondly, um, some people will obviously go on the sun on the Saturday, but it'd be uh, sorry on the Sunday. But it'd be wonderful if they're there on the Sunday evening as well, because what Dee Dee mentioned earlier about the um, the, the bonfire, you know, we're hoping to have a fire. Um, that would that'd be really special on the Sunday, because then we're actually chilling. There's no like major rush apart from people that have got an early flight um, can really enjoy it on the Sunday if they're not going into town, of course. So uh, 
to be yeah, really and there's people that will be living in Amsterdam that are going to be going to this, I'm sure, and they can just come to the campsite and enjoy the bonfire, even if they're staying somewhere else. I would uh, imagine. Yeah, Dee Dee's more Dee -Dee. of an expert on the on the area, so yes. I'm just going to get my charger. In two seconds. Okay. Yeah, Dee Dee, is what I what I said true? I mean, you there will be people who live in the area who aren't going to be staying in a TP or a, you know any other uh, ca um, a cabin but they'll just come for the uh, the different um they'll go to the uh event and also for the campfire and the hangout they'll just come hang out with everyone at the campsite yes you can just visit uh, come as a visitor to the campsite uh, of course you have to register it with uh, with the campsite manager but I don't see an issue with just coming to the campsite as a visitor, but of course, it would be lovely if you could uh, if you could stay around because, uh, as you know, at most conventions there's not a lot of sleep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I I know. Um, yeah, I totally know. I try to before I go to any of these get a lot of sleep. I know you can't store sleep; it's technically scientifically impossible. But you you sleep a lot before you go, and then you go, and then you forget about sleep. You sleep on the plane and what, what's the expression um i'll sleep when i'm dead <laughs> so. yes. well um let me go into the live chat you guys you two think about anything that i've not yet discussed that you might want to bring up and i'm just going to greet everybody who's here i want to say hello to stephen watson and zoe be here in love and she's going to be in attendance and hang out with all of us hello to spherical cow and hey jason of the disbury family we were just talking about you hello bob from globusters we were just talking about you as well um We've also got Chris Van Matry, another person I got to hang out with in, in Denver. Uh, Cami, yes, and Martin Leakey is here as well. Martin, lovely to see you. Hope to see you very soon. Uh, Mikey Smith is here too. Um, Andres Ace and Go Find the Others, hello. D-I-T-R-H, and let me scroll up a little bit. I'm having issues with my computer and scrolling. Maybe I need to get a new computer, ugh. Um, hello to GM, CDXX and also to Yahweh Fire and Top Hill. Let me scroll up a little more. Yeah, it's becoming an issue with this computer. I don't know why. Um, um, let's see, I'm using uh, the touch part of the MacBook Pro and I know that Mark Sargent would say, get a mouse. I'm not a mouse person, Mark Sargent. <laughs> Hello to Wheel Skeptic and uh, also to Ryan Q, Brian Staveley, by the way, in the live chat, he's posted his backup channel because his first channel was taken down by YouTube. So if you find Brian Staveley, uh, his channel um, and his name, um, just click on it and you'll be able to subscribe to his brand new channel. We always want to support people whose channels are taken down by unfair strikes. Karen B, we mentioned you earlier. So hi to you. Thanks for being here. And Chief Crow and the Flat Earth Worms. Hello to you. Um, see a few more people that I can say hello to before we um, we close. Well, a few more questions and answers and we close. Dominic Sobolewski, hello. Thank you. Iron Realm Media, hello. Iron Realm made a comment earlier and said that they had been unsubscribed from my channel. It's happened to me too. I've been unsubscribed to many people's channels. Then I, I'm looking at a video and I'm like, why am I not subscribed? And then I subscribe again. So yeah, it's one of those things. We don't know how it happens. I mean, some people consider, oh, it's YouTube unsubscribing people. Sometimes I just think it's using a touch screen iPhone. I'm scrolling and might accidentally subscribe to someone I don't want to or unsubscribe from somebody I want to be subscribed to. So check your subscriptions. Hello to the Adam Meekin and a few more people. Um, Dave Marsh, hello. Thanks for being here, Dave. And let me see if I can find one person whose name I haven't mentioned already. Hey, Lisa, je prefer flats and Cat Aaron Davis. Everyone who's here, totally appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up and check the description box for more info on what we're talking about. Okay, you two. So is there anything that we want to talk about that I haven't touched on before we close things out? Didi? Well, we have a, a, a fun little trailer on our YouTube channel if people want to see more about the campsite and the, the venue itself. And there's some footage in the trailer. They can go check the trailer out. And uh, another thing, of course, we, we've been, uh, well, I've been to the, the US uh, uh, conference. Twice. Two or three, twice now, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Gary went to Denver once. So uh, we always uh, we always get in touch with Robbie, and he's a he's a very sweet guy. He, he also supports us and helps us, and he will come to Amsterdam as well in uh, in September. Robbie, 
Wonderful. Good. Not that I won't be seeing him in Canada and Dallas, the two American events that are coming up. Ravi and I have this tradition that we started, which is we get to the American slash Canadian events super early before anyone else is there and have dinner together. It accidentally started and now it's become a thing. So um, Gary, it uh, looks like your camera has gone off and um, every once in a while DD years goes off too, just letting you know, but they, they've been on and off. It's probably the connection. So uh, Gary, if you're still there, is there anything that you want to add before we close things out? I th uh, can you hear me okay? I can hear you perfectly, just the cameras. That's out. great. Yeah, no, I can, I can see for some reason it's just died this end and I can't seem to go back in. Um, I think a lot of the names that you just mentioned, um, I would like to just say that, you know, a, a huge shout out to all of them, really, because over the last few years, I've got to know them, you know, some more than others, but um, there's some very special people there that you've mentioned. And there's a load of people there that are not in the chat tonight um, that have really supported us and um, been, you know, they re they really helped to um, to make this very special. And um, so, yeah, I'd like to say thank you to them, really, and, and yourself and, you know, like Globusers and, you know, and and like the Global Light Tour team and, you know, and all the people that I've connected with over the last few years. And, and I've got to be honest, I think the most special person to me is, is Dee Dee. And, and even though she'd probably be a bit embarrassed about me saying this, is that the journey she's been on from where she started off when I first met her to now is just amazing. And I think out of every single person I know in the Flat Earth, I think the growth that she's gone on has been extreme. And I'm very proud of her. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Damn you, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, now you owe me a compliment now, Didi. <laughs> Setting you up. <laughs> yeah. Come well, on, I'm I, waiting. <laughs> I, I, love, I love doing this. So you asked earlier, Patricia, what we do with, with the money, if, if we do make money. For mm. me, organizing conventions and bringing people together, is, it's, my, it's become my passion and, and something I'm very good at. So... If we do make a little bit of money, it will go straight into another convention because this is what I want to do. That's a perfect answer. And the answer, actually, I expected you to say. Well, what time is it where you are, Didi? It's pretty late slash early, correct? I'll sleep when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I love it. And Gary, you've got, uh, what, uh, six hours ahead of my US time. So uh, uh, Yeah, I, I'm an hour. I, I, I think Didi's got the latest time because I've obviously been in um, Belgium. So um, whatever time it is with uh, Didi, it's an hour better for me. Well, I'll let you both go to sleep, get some rest, and perhaps we can do another hangout, a little short one like this, as we progress further, closer to September and uh, the convention. Yeah, we would love that. Okay, wonderful. Uh, Dee Dee Van and Gary John Heather, or Gary Heather, depending upon how you know him. Thanks, thanks to both of you for being here. I truly appreciate it. Well, thanks thank for you, having us. Thank everybody here, yeah. This concludes episode number 270 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I will see you very, very soon. And until then, keep it flat.